It's loading now. Okay, great. Just let me know when we're up and at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are live. All right, uh, Trustee Williams, you can get started. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. The Thursday, May 6, 2021 meeting of the Committee on Finance and Administrative Services is now called to order. For the record, we continue to be subject to restrictions in the size and types of gatherings that, that are permissible. The state of Illinois continues to operate under a statewide disaster proclamation first issued by Governor Pritzker on March 9th, 2020 and reaffirmed on April 30th, 2021. Will the Assistant Board Secretary please call the roll? Uh, Secretary Davis. <laughs> Present. Trustee Kent. Present. Trustee Lopez. Present. Uh, student Trustee Fazel Hulk. Present. Chair Massey. Present. And Trustee Williams. Present. Okay, well, good afternoon again. Spring has come to Chicagoland. And with the landscape coming alive, we can also celebrate the continued distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. I want to thank all of the healthcare workers who continue to serve society by saving lives, both in the hospitals and ICUs, and also those working at mass vaccination sites. In a moment, Chief Financial Officer Rodriguez will be giving an update on the Higher Education Efficiency Relief Fund, or HERF. For those of you unfamiliar, HERF funding has provided student emergency grants and institutional funds during the COVID-19 pandemic to higher ed education institutions across the country. CFO Rodriguez will give us more information about the funds the City Colleges of Chicago has, has received, as well as how the funding has been used. We will also review the board reports that will be considered during the May regular board meeting, which will take place later this afternoon at 2 p.m. CFO Rodriguez, before you get started, do you have any additional remarks for us today? If not, you can proceed with your presentation. Uh, yeah. Oh, I do have uh, some remarks. Um, second. You can go ahead, CFO Rodriguez. Thank you. Okay. So thank you, Trustee Williams. Good afternoon, trustees, chancellor, and officers of the district. Welcome to the May 6, 2021 Finance and Administrative Services Committee. In today's meeting, the board will consider resolutions for a number of new programs aimed at meeting a workforce demand, demonstrating the breadth of pathways we offer students. We will get a development report that highlights our continued work around fundraising, including efforts to create work-based learning experiences for its students. CCC has been awarded two out of the three federal stimulus grants. I will cover what we received and what, how we are spending those funds in my presentation. We are coming to the end of the semester. I want to congr congratulate our soon to be graduates and to encourage all of our students, faculty and staff in this home stretch. With that, I guess I will jump into the presentation, correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Give me a moment. Okay. So uh, this is the presentation on the HERF uh, stimulus funds that we received. Um, we can go to the second slide. Here, I was not sure. Yeah, so this is the um, first round of stimulus funds. It's called CARES Act or HERF 1. Uh, you can move on to the next slide. <laughs> So this was the first stimulus bill passed during the start of the pandemic in March, 2020. About 14 billion was allocated to higher education institutions to support the cost related to remote instruction and provided students impacted by the COVID pandemic with emergency grants. 
CCC was awarded a total amount of 25.4 million across all seven colleges, 57% of which was for student emergency grants and 57% for institutional use. The allocations by college was derived by a formula from the De uh, Department of Education. You may move on. Okay. This slide shows the individual allocations by college and how the student grants were dispersed. Uh, it is important to note that uh, for the first round, as per DOE guidelines, only Title IV eligible students were eligible for this initial funds. For reference, Title IV students are degree seeking and have a completed financial aid application on file. We began distributing the funds last spring of 2020 through the early part of this current spring term. Overall, we assisted a total of 20,470 students with the HERF One funds. You may move on. The next slide shows how our institutional funds were used. In the first bucket, we used about a third of the funds to cover technology purchases, such as laptops, Chromebooks, and mobile, mobile Wi-Fi devices for students and faculty during the transition to remote learning. A small portion was used for PPE and cleaning supplies. And in the third bucket for other expenses, these funds were used to cover payroll expenses to keep our entire workforce intact during the pandemic. Maribel, I have a question, uh, two actually. Yeah. Uh, so do we, first of all, did all this, we depleted all the student funds, I gather. Do we have any sense of how, how many students uh, would have needed funds or could have used them who were not available before they ran out? Uh, we do. So uh, from the first round of, of HERF, uh, we were able to distribute all the funds um, through January on the student portion. Uh, there was uh, 2,800 students that had applied that we were unable to take care of during the first round. However, uh, when we did receive the funds from HERB2, we were able to disperse the funds to them as they were still currently enrolled for the spring 2021 term. Okay, second question. So the, the institutional funds go to the colleges not to the district. So could we use funds at headquarters? And for example, is that true of all systems? The University of California with funds just go to the campuses and not the system headquarters? How does that work? Okay, so in, in relation to the, that's a very good question. In relation to technology and expenses for supplies and materials, those are direct expenses related to each of the colleges. So we have to expense it directly to each campus. However, uh, for the other, not, not however, any district-wide purchases were distributed. If there were material, they were distributed um, on a prorated basis, prorated approach by college. So all of these are direct costs incurred by each of the colleges to answer your question. So there, there were no funds allocated to district office. But technology is system wide. Technology is not campus specific. How do you fund technology without funding things at the system level? Correct. So there were purchases that were made directly by the campuses as needed, such as laptop inventories, Chromebooks that were requested by college. Mm -hmm. And in the relation to system upgrade, upgrades and licensing, those were district wide purchases as is normally treated for our budget. And those were applied in a, as a prorated, prorated approach by each campus as an expense. I, I got it, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, any additional question as well? Yeah, oh, sure. um, you mentioned that um, the, there were some applied to the employment, right? Was that all full-time, but as well as part-time professors or only one group of the professors? No, this is actually uh, what we use here for uh, institutional portion is mainly uh, those clerical uh, staff that were unable that because we were working remotely, remotely were unable to come to campus to perform uh, their job duties. Mm, okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. Any additional questions on the slide? We can move on, Ashley, or okay. So this is this takes us to the second one of the stimulus funds, uh, which we were referred to as PERF two. You can move on. So the HERF2 bill was passed in December 2020. About 21 billion was allocated to higher education institutions to continue to support institutions and students through the pandemic. CCC was awarded a total amount of 53.2 million across all seven colleges, 12.7 million for student emergency grants and 40.5 million for institutional use. And like the CARES Act, the allocations by college were driven by uh, Department of Ed uh, formulas. Next slide. So this is just an overall review of what the funds were uh, allocated in terms of but by college. So 12.7 uh, bucket for students and 40.5 for institutional. And you can see the uh, percentages by total allocation by college here. You can move on. Okay. So for her too, eligibility was expanded to non-degree seeking students. However, it still restricted eligibility, excluding undocumented students. The DOE provided guidance for the use of the emergency grants to be prioritized to those with exceptional need. Those reprioritized the Pell and MAP students by allowing them to apply the emergency grants first during the first two, two uh, weeks of the application process. That application process began on April 13 through April 28. Now the application process is open to all other eligible students. Students also now have the option to apply their emergency grants directly to any outstanding account balances from March 13, 2020 to present. The award amount for the priority group is $1,000, $700 for all other credit students and $500 for adult education students. To date, I'm happy to report that we've disbursed $8.4 million to 9,000 students. Any questions before we move on? Okay. I'm gonna proceed. On the institutional portion of the HERC2 fund, the DOE also now allows for additional flexibility in the use of funds. A significant change is that colleges may claim reimbursement for lost revenue due to the pandemic, such as tuition, facilities rental, and others. These funds will help cover the financial gaps resulting from our enrollment declines that have been exacerbated by the pandemic. We will also continue to cover the cost of technology, PPE, and cleaning supplies. Our preliminary plan to use is about uh, 16.5 million of the 40.5 million in FY 2021 and the remaining 24 million for fiscal year 2022. This concludes my part of the presentation. I'm happy to answer any additional questions you may have before we move on. I have another yeah. question. So, sorry if I interrupted. When you, when you calculate revenue loss, what do you use as a base for tuition, expected tuition income? Very good question. So the DOE provided additional guidelines of the methodology that you may apply. Uh, one of them is to that you can use three years of, of your historical tuition revenue uh, pre-pandemic as your base for your tuition revenue loss. So you will compare that average for the previous three years to what your current revenue law is. Uh, so it is uh, substantial. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so with that, I will turn it over to our chief of staff, Veronica Herrero. Uh, she's going to provide CCC's plan approach for the investment of the HERC-3 institutional funds, uh, which was signed into law on March 2021 under the American Rescue Plan bill. Thank you. Thank you, CFO Rodriguez. Um, next slide, please. So as CFO Rodriguez just shared, 93.6 million is the um, amount that has been preliminarily um, allocated to the City Colleges of Chicago 
from the Higher Education Emergency Fund, or HERF-3. So similar to HERF-1, 50% of the 93.6 million will go directly to student emergency grants, and the other 46.8 million is the institutional portion um, that will be used to defray expenses associated with the pandemic. Um, we expect to receive these funds very soon and to be able to expend these funds over fiscal years 22 and 23. Uh, we'd like to be thoughtful and strategic about the use of these funds and to be ready to deploy a plan once we have the funds in hand. Uh, today, I will share with you the approach that we will be taking with these funds, which is directly aligned with our college strategic plans and district strategic framework, our path forward. And as you may recall, our path forward is focused on six strategic levers. Um, the goals and strategies that fall within those levers continue to grow in relevance. And over the past year, we have moved from a district that was reacting with urgency um, to, to pivot to remote learning and student services to one that is rich, rich, rich in wisdom. Um, we now understand you know, which adjustments and strategies from the past year should be expanded, accelerated, and improved to continue to meet the needs of our students and maximize their learning inside and outside the classroom, online, online hybrid, or in person. We have an even clear vision of our role in our city's economic recovery, and importantly, in how we will make that recovery racially inclusive and equitable. Aligned with our path forward, our HERF3 investment approach will promote our goals to create an exceptional student experience, become a student-ready, equitable institution, develop and strengthen pathways that are responsive to the economic needs of the city, build a culture of excellence, create a student-centered and collaborative ecosystem, and monitor and ensure financial sustainability and the overall health of our institution. Next slide, please. I have a question. Is there a, um, are, we, are we grading or should we work on one of the goals versus another, or we're just trying to do all of the goals with the, uh, with the money? All of the, so, what, how we plan on using the funds is aligned with the entire vision and all of the college plan. So what we are going to invest to in, last can slide, be found in the plans. Yeah, yeah so these the are the four slide? areas. Yeah, I think I'm gonna answer your question with this slide. Mm -hmm. um, the next slide though, thanks. Um, so this plan to answer your question, it does draw directly from the college plans and the strategic framework, but it hones in on four key areas that we believe will have the greatest impact on the success of our current and prospective students and our institution during this critical time of recovery. So the first area focuses on access, retention, and completion. Uh, we'll invest in our partnership with Chicago Public Schools to continue to ensure that CPS students are able to seamlessly access the programs and education that we have to offer. Um, and we'll do that through the Chicago Roadmap. As we all know, the financial barriers that our students face have only been exacerbated this past year. And we'll continue to invest in retention and completion grants and now provide discounted tuition programs to students with the greatest academic and economic economic needs, such as our students placed in developmental education. We will invest in growing and improving our online and remote course options and virtual student services. Next is student support services. We know that in order to meet the holistic needs of our students, we can't just focus on the financial barriers, uh, but we need to expand and accelerate our student services and culture of care. We'll make capacity building investments to serve students holistically in and outside the classroom, accelerate delivery of personalized and high touch supports, expand and improve in-person embedded and virtual tutoring capacity and provide financial empower pro empowerment programs to help our students get back on solid footing. Third, we will invest in our centers of excellence, which provide us with the infrastructure to be able to respond in an agile and responsive manner and to play a critical role in our city's economic recovery. We'll develop new and, and strengthen existing short-term certificate programs and continuing education offerings. And finally, we will monitor our long-term sustainability and overall well-being of our institution by ensuring the safety of our CCC community during the pandemic and ensure financial stability. 
So at that point, I'll open it up to questions from our trustees on um, the HERF 3 plan. This is a one-time grant. Oh, these are one-time grants, right? Correct. Similar to like the HERF 1, HERF 2, and HERF 3, there are, we have to expend the dollars by um, a certain date. We don't have the specific guidance, but we believe we will have these dollars, which again, for the institutional portion is 46.8 million for fiscal year 22 and 23. Um, if I may, I have a question. On the student support services, does that, it, it speaks to wellness? Um, is there, is, does wellness include anything along the lines of mental health and, and some of the stuff I'm reading about, this is a very difficult time for everyone, right? And, and students 100% uh, studying from home and all the pressures, is there mental health or can that be covered under that if that were to be needed? That is exactly the idea. The specifics okay. we're still, you know, we're, we're, we're still figuring out, but the idea is yes, we are fully aware that our students are coming in with an increased need for mental health supports, and we want to be ready to provide that. And I don't know if Provost Potter wanted to add anything there. I have a related question of Mark, you can answer them both. So I would think in this area of student support services, it would require either some upgrading and staff or training of some kind, because I would, I don't know, I would just be my gut feeling that people are not going to be quite prepared to handle this at the level you want them to. Yeah, those are those are both good good questions. On the on the wellness piece, we do have our wellness centers at every college which provide services to students in support of their mental health. And the idea is to invest in those wellness centers to be able to. Um, as the trustee mentioned, you know, ad address the what, what we anticipate as the the, the need as students, um, you know, uh, uh, continue their enrollment at, at city colleges. And Chair Massey, the the student services piece is is absolutely on, on our minds. We're we're going to be tr trying something that we haven't done previously, which is to both provide student services virtually and student services in person at the same time so that we can meet students where they are. And that is going to require some investment into the, um, the enterprise systems for virtual student services, as well as the professional development to make sure that our, our staff are able to provide that level of service in, in both um, uh, modalities. So does that mean like virtual sessions, like similarly to telehealth well, or? Yes, it, it, it can very well mean that. And, and that is what we're currently, how we're currently operating in across our student services, whether we're talking about wellness or college advisors or financial aid, they're utilizing um, Zoom or other tools to provide services virtually to students. And we want to maintain that because where we see it working well, we want to make sure that students can still access, access us in that way, while at the same time now accommodating students as they return in person to campus. Yeah, that's going to be my, my next question. How do they know about the service and how do they get the service? We have, we have been, since the beginning of the pandemic, we have been communicating with students about our virtual student services. There's a landing page on our website. Actually, if you go to the very home page of our website, there is a link there and on many other uh, of, the, of the frequent websites that students visit where students can click on and it brings them directly to virtual student services. Thank you. Can, when we talk about wellness, can, can, is this something we can provide like staff and faculty as well in terms of mental health wellness? Can we use the dollars for that as well? I can speak to our wellness centers, which are, you know, have as their mission to serve the students of city colleges. We do have other programs through our HR benefit that provide wellness supports to employees. Um, I'm, I'm not able to answer the question though about utilizing her 
dollars for that. I, I would say it's within bounds, mm -hmm. but that hasn't been part of the discussion yet. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of companies and employers are enhancing the the wellness, health, wellness benefits for employees given the you know the stress of the pandemic. So. If I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't know what we have in place, but it's something we should definitely look at because um, I know a lot, a lot of it's available now in telehealth um, and many, many employees are, are utilizing that. So I think it's something we should look into. Yeah, I would, I think that's a great idea. Uh, and then going back to the student, I, I'm actually on the website and it doesn't actually speak to any kind of mental health type services. It just says, kind of general come and schedule an appointment with your advisor. So I don't know if an advisor would be different than a mental health type counselor or therapist. I guess I don't know if I reading this would understand that that includes, right, mental health type services or, or therapist. Maybe something to look at. Yeah, thank you for that, Trustee. Mark, I think it's important, uh, Provost Potter, to also point out that a lot of these services are accessed through the Brightspace um, uh, uh, you know, tool. So once a student is a student, that's when the doorway to these student to these services actually open up, uh, and they have a, uh, a specific account in our learning management system uh, where there's more uh, sort of complete access. You know, to the overall services. And I will ask you, Provost Potter, to, I think it's useful to, um, you know, offer to any trustee who would like to, you know, sort of view what that experience is like and give us any feedback on that experience through the learning management system um, for students, because I think fresh eyes uh, on uh, that experience are often very, very helpful. We did, uh, Trustee Lopez, for um, informational purposes, um, we did invest in a new learning management system as an institution when I arrived four years ago. One of the uh, key issues that our faculty and stakeholders uh, lifted up as a pain point was our learning management system at the time, uh, which was not very user-friendly and therefore not very well used <laughs> within the institution. Um, one of the big things that helped us in the pandemic is uh, we ran a process to acquire and purchase a new learning management system. Uh, that process included faculty champions and uh, staff champions uh, that you know, really understood and were part of the overall process of securing the system and then championing the utilization of the system across the institution. And I really do credit that effort to the success that we had in the pandemic because the, the, the real um, strength of you know, students accessing information is the community's engagement with those systems, right? Uh, and, uh, and so we had a lot of engagement before the pandemic hit and now uh, that engagement has just, you know, just become absolutely complete because everyone's on the platform. Those institutions that didn't have um, a strong learning management system, particularly K through 12 institutions, uh, struggled mightily. You can't build this during a pandemic. You can't build the utilization of it during a pandemic. You have to do that well in advance. Yes, sir. I, I also I also want to point out really quickly, if I may, that we have an alert system also at city colleges that we have worked to build up over the last several months. And recently, so this is an alert system that allows faculty, for example, to indicate that a student is in need of support or help, whether that's academic support or some other holistic student support. And recently we added a functionality where students can self alert also where they can go into an app or into the tool and say, I need help with X, Y, and Z. And that triggers a care team response, whether that's from wellness or from an advisor or from financial aid or, or tutoring or some other service. And I was just gonna add, um, Trustee Lopez, I, your point is very well taken about the language on the, on the landing page for the virtual student services and it's not clear, but once you do click on the college for virtual student services by college, 
it takes you to the, you can choose the waiting room for um, the wellness center. So there is actually a direct link there, but we can do a better job with the, the language we use on the landing page. You know, uh, Mark, one thing I'd be interested in, and you're watching out for, it. in places I've been, uh, students are quite often uh, reluctant to go live to a wellness center. You know, it can carry a stigma, especially if there's a waiting room and so forth. I would think this might be an opportunity to actually have more students virtually take advantage of the services because they can do it in, in almost complete privacy. Mm -hmm. Be interested if you were to watch those trends and see how that in fact begins to take place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chair, we we can we can um, we can pull the usage numbers over over time the last couple of years and share with you what that what that looks like. I don't need to know it. I just okay. Things that you might want to take advantage of. Is it a, um, have you decided how much of the, the investment will fall into these buckets? Or is Trustee, that something you still, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, Trustee, I was, was ready to answer. Um, we have not. Um, oh. we, we obviously, as we do with everything um, in the management style that I've been implementing, we are working collaboratively with the presidents um, to, you know, make sure we can arrive uh, at what the right mix is, uh, and we're just in that process. And as CFO Rodriguez and um, as has mentioned, we have not yet received these funds, but we want to be ready to deploy them. Um, so, you know, as we get closer to a more refined sense, um, we will definitely keep you all informed. We did want to get out early with the if you, big picture, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. To get your feedback um, as we're getting today uh, and uh, appreciate that you're uh, providing. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Chancellor. Are there any other questions? No, good presentation, okay. thank you. Thank you, CFO Rodriguez and CSO Herrero. Um, we will now move on to review the items proposed for board action at the May 6th regular board meeting, which will take place after this meeting at 2 p.m. Will the assistant board secretary please proceed with the review of board reports? Thank you, Trustee Williams. For our presenters, as always, please proceed one after another, briefly pausing to give the trustees a moment to, to ask any questions they might have about an item. So we will begin with resolutions. Associate Vice Chancellor Anthony will begin with resolution 1.00. Provost Potter will review resolutions 1.01 .01 through 1.04. Chief Town Officer Dunning will review resolution 1.05, followed by President Sanders with resolution 1.06. Chief Advisor Phillips will review Resolution 1.07, followed by CTO Dunning with Resolution 1.08. ABC Anthony, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, resolution 1.00 requests the board's authority to enter into a trust agreement with the State of Illinois Capital Development Board to undertake a project to replace the fire alarm and public address system in five buildings at Kennedy King College. This project was selected for state funding and is among the district's high priority deferred maintenance and life safety requirements. The state of Illinois will provide 75% of the project cost up to a maximum of $1,207,500. Projects that receive funding from the state require a local match of at least 25% of the project value. This agreement is, requir is required to place the district's local match contribution into a trust account the local match for this project is $402,500. The next four resolutions are all new programs and all at Truman College. And I just wanna uh, let the trustees know that President Jackson is here to answer any questions that you may have from these resolutions. So to begin, resolution 1.01 .01 seeks board approval for a new program the basic certificate in iOS and macOS development at Truman College. This curriculum will be housed within Innovation One, a technology training and resource center that will provide access to Apple training and resources for students and serve as a workspace and learning hub 
for Chicago's educators in both K-12 and higher education spaces. This program builds upon Truman's Center of Excellence for Education in that it provides K-12 educators with formal training using Apple platforms and an option for earning their computer science subsequent endorsement. This certificate also includes a path for students to focus solely on Apple software development. Resolution 1.02 is for approval of a new program, the Advanced Certificate in Human Development and Family Studies at Truman College. Truman College already offers the basic certificate, the Applied Associates degree, and an Associate of Arts degree pathway in Human Development and Family Studies. Recently, the state realigned the certification requirements, creating entry points for family support specialists that align with this proposed advanced certificate. The coursework for this advanced certificate already exists and is being delivered by Truman College. The college will be prepared to offer this credential beginning in fall of 2021. Resolution 1.03 is for approval of a new degree program the Associate in Applied Science in Barbering at Truman College. Truman College already offers the Advanced Certificate in Barbering, which is a 50 credit hour program as required for the barbering license. The degree program adds required general education and business coursework to fill out the curriculum and to prepare students for entrepreneurship and management in addition to the barbering license. The degree program also consists of transferable courses and will position students to continue their studies at four-year institutions in business, which is a track that many beauty industry professionals pursue. And lastly, among these, Resolution 1.04 is also for approval of a new degree program, the Associate in Applied Science in Cosmetology at Truman College, very similar to the aforementioned AAS in Barbering, Truman is adding general education and business coursework to an existing advanced certificate, thereby affording graduates additional career opportunities and the potential for higher earnings, particularly in management roles. I have a question. So suppose I already have a license in Barbering or cosmetology, but I feel I need some of the business and management skills. Could I join this program anyway? President Jackson, would you like to answer that? Uh, from my understanding, this is added to the license chair. So the, the thought process that we had when we were originally creating this concept was many individuals that go into this field to Provost Potter's point, want to have the opportunity to open their own businesses. And so what we did was we aligned some of the uh, business courses to be able to offer this associate's degree. So to my knowledge, and I don't want to misspeak, if they already have the license, which would be the 1500 hours per se, they would be able to add the uh, general education courses to that license. Good, I hope so. Yeah, I'm sure the, my, a lot of people- And, 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 and Chair Massey, if, if they don't have the college credit, that is transferable into city colleges that that was was you know part of that licensure, then we can figure out solutions like prior learning assessment. Good. Thank you. Hi, I had a question as well. It's really exciting. Thank you. It sounds really like great opportunities. Um, on relating to the other certificates that you mentioned. What are, are there some areas on the helping students get, right? Because there's a part of getting the certificates, getting the degree. What are some of the things that are offered as part of placement or helping to get jobs and particularly in this virtual environment, right? Where we're interviewing and not meeting people. Are there any elements there in terms of help or an area of the universities that actually help students get placement in jobs or internships in jobs? Uh, yes, I'll speak to, uh, I'll start with the basic iOS and Mac OS programs. Uh, what's interesting for Truman and the way we presented, uh, pre the way we have presented ourselves as a center of excellence is we actually uh, offer training for the current teacher workforce. And so what's interesting about this particular certificate 
is it has two paths. So we originally designed it uh, for teachers because teachers are in need to have this computer science endorsement and to have this in a credit space. Uh, we may be only the second college in Illinois that's doing that if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so there is a, a teacher path for current teachers. But there is also a path, if I do not want to be a teacher, that I can go into app development. Uh, and there is a ton of job opportunities uh, within that field. Uh, we particularly have a relationship uh, with Apple uh, and are working on something called the Apple Consultant Network. Uh, and the Apple Consultant Network, essentially what they do is they train individuals to serve as kind of a portable IT, if you will, uh, to work with small businesses that may not have the opportunity to have a robust, uh, robust IT services. Uh, so from this certificate, uh, students will have the opportunity to roll into that Apple Consultant Network. Uh, but there are also a, a ton of opportunities uh, within app development, but within that particular relationship with Apple, the Apple Consultant Network is where we would be looking to place students. Um, in regards to the human development and family studies, that actually, uh, that need came from DFSS uh, that manages a lot of the early childhood space. Uh, individuals that are in early childhood were looking for that creden credential in particular. Uh, and so we were adding this advanced certificate uh, to that work for that particular field. Uh, so we're looking at the opportunity for our students that are, are currently uh, looking to be early childhood educators to have the opportunity to add this credential uh, to their work. Trustee Lopez, it's also worth noting more broadly that every one of our colleges has a, a career center and a transfer center, both of which are, are offering their services virtually like the other student services as, as we discussed previously. And it's also worth noting that for every certificate or degree program that we bring before the board, we ensure as part of our internal program approval processes that they are relevant to the labor market, that we have labor market data that shows that students can get jobs with these certificates or degrees. Thank you. Okay. Resolution 1.05 is a request for approval to execute an agreement with State University Retirement System at no cost to city colleges. This agreement will be compliant with Section 15202 of the Illinois Pension Code, requiring us to offer a voluntary Internal Revenue Code Section 457 plan to our employees through SERS. All funds will be withheld from city college employees' pay and transferred to SERS, where they are administered and held in trust. The resolution 1.06 is a request to the board to authorize an intergovernmental agreement with the City of Chicago Department of Public Health for Malcolm X to manage and administer a COVID-19 vaccine ambassador training program. The intent of this program is to educate city residents on COVID-19 vaccine knowledge and to provide basic skills for graduates of the course to discuss COVID-19 vaccinations. The city of Chicago will compensate Malcolm X College and city colleges of Chicago up to $60,000 for this program, plus an additional $750 for each session beyond the initial six sessions. With the board's approval, this program will commence today, May 6, 2021, and will continue for 12 months thereafter. Chief Advisor Phillips. Chief Advisor Phillips, you're on mute for uh, resolution 1.07. Just a second. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Resolution 1.07 is to appoint the student board member in accordance with the state act and the board uh, and the board bylaws. The student body of Harry S. Truman College at a recent election selected Iram Basil Hoag as the student um, board member to represent all campuses of the City Colleges of Chicago. His term is for one year, beginning April 15th, 2021 through April 14th, 2022. 
Resolution 1.08 is a request for approval to extend the temporary telework policy concerning the COVID-19 pandemic that was established in July 2020 until July 31st, 2021, unless revocated by the board prior to that date. It also requests approval to extend the COVID sick leave policy that was also established in July 2020 until December 31st, 2021, unless revocated by the board prior to that date. Resolution 1.08 also extends authorization to the chancellor upon receiving prior approval of the chair and the vice chair or their respective trustee designees to approve temporary policies that revise or replace the employee manual, student employee handbook, academic and student policies, section 4.10, 4.11, 4.13, and 9.10 of the board policies and procedures and a temporary telework and COVID sick leave policy discussed previously. This authorization will be valid until July 31st, 2021, unless revocated by the board. There are no questions on the, on the resolutions. Um, CTO Downing, please continue with the review of item 2.00, the personnel report. Board item 2.00 is a request to approve the May 2021 personnel report. There are 56 actions on this month's report. They include 12 new and rehires, 31 promotions, title and salary changes, and 13 separations and retirement. This concludes the report. Thank you, Chief of Strategy and Staff Herrero. Please review item 3.00, the resource development report. The May resource development report includes three grant proposals funded and received totaling $842,000. Additionally, there were six grant applications submitted totaling 3.5 million. Awards received include a new gift of $600,000 from the PepsiCo Foundation and 230,000 from a new funder, the Sumerian Foundation. The PepsiCo Uplift Program provides critical scholarship resources and high touch support for Black and Latinx students and will enable City Colleges of Chicago to create a more intentional and effective pipeline of Black and Latinx students successfully navigating our degree certificate and continuing education programs. Um, this will result in long-term career placement in high growth occupations and economic impact for the communities where they live. The program will support 160 students across the programs and the Sumerian Foundation grant will support a total of 20 students to enroll in the Software Development Associates degree program at Wright College and to participate in an accelerated software engineering apprenticeship program. We're incredibly excited to be able to, be able to offer these programs to our students. In section two of the report, you'll see a summary of the six new grant applications and among them is a $1 million ask for the Chicago Roadmap from the Bloom Family Foundation for the Master Builder Program. And you also find the U.S. Department of Energy subaward through ACOM's ask of $2.2 million. The Master Builder Program outlined in the Bloom Family proposal would allow CPS students to opt into a Master Builder Program while in high school and earn credits to transfer into an AAS pathway at Dawson Technical Institution at Kennedy King. Um, moving to section three, I am pleased to report that City Colleges and the City Colleges Foundation received a total of $333,175 in donations. Notably, Malcolm X received $100,000 from Delta Dental to purchase equipment and supplies for their dental program. And the CCC Foundation received $225,000 towards Chicago Star Plus from the Canning Foundation, John and Mindy Gray Foundation, and um, former Mayor Rahm Emanuel and Amy Rule. The Star Plus Scholarship Fund was founded by former Mayor Rahm Emanuel and his wife, Amy Rule, earlier this year. Um, the new Star Plus Scholarship Fund will support City Colleges with Chicago Star Scholars, um, the graduates of that program, that maintain an a, uh, sorry, a B average or better and who are admitted to four-year higher education institutions. The fund's objective is to ensure that more students can access viable pathways to four-year institutions and pursue their bachelor's degrees. Star Plus Scholars will receive $5,000 over two years. And in addition to their seed gift, former Mayor um, Emmanuel and Ms. Rule intend to make simil a similarly sized annual gift while continuing to seek support from others. They have set the ambitious goal to raise support for 1,000 scholarships or up to 5 million. This concludes the May Resource Development Report. 
I have a question. I'm looking for this energy and society course. Which grant was that? That is the uh, the sub award. I, I think it's the engineering program you're referring to. I don't know. Is it? Well, no. We well, there there is an engineering um, uh, no, energy. Energy, energy. I'm energy. sorry. Energy, energy. course. It may be. It may be related to the Department of Energy submittal. This one is, um, it's a tuition reimbursement for a four credit hour energy and society class that I think that's the one yes, you yes, yes. referring to mm -hmm. for the energy lab classroom. And where's the funding coming from? That is the US, the US Department of Energy. It is? Okay. I thought it said something like AEM. Some oh. award is through ACOM. What is ACOM? Chair, what... Chair Massey, AECOM is an uh, energy management company uh, that, uh, you know, one of the things that they do, it, well, uh, ABC Anthony, can you just uh, talk about some of the work that we're doing with AECOM that has led to this proposal that we're going to have with AECOM? Yeah, thank you, Chancellor. So um, AECOM does provide um, commissioning and retro commissioning services. Um, uh, and uh, this proposal would uh, set up a live energy lab where students would be able to monitor actual energy consumption um, in, some of our pro uh, in some of our buildings. Um, and uh, another portion of that grant would be uh, potentially used for tuition reimbursement in for students in that energy and society class. So who designed the energy and society course? I mean, did ACOM design it or did our faculty design it? That's a, an existing course at City oh, College. We already, but, but we already had the course, uh, you know, specifically uh, designed uh, you know, I, I just can't remember the name of the uh, faculty member who teaches the course right now, uh, but he also leads our sustainable uh, work. John Brophy. John Brophy, um, yes. Yeah. John Brophy uh, is the person who has been leading the course, uh, who's been working uh, both very closely with Wright College and very closely with Dawson Technical Institute, drawing upon the experience of both of those institutions, mainly but not exclusively. There's energy, uh, energy <laughs> for this um, across our seven colleges. And what's I think really unique about the lab is it will give our students the ability to be engaged in how CCC can become smarter in terms of its utilization of energy as an institution. I don't know how we would do this, uh, uh, but I would suggest if we could put in this resolution funding an existing course because it could be read as I was that we were teaching a course that a company has given us money to teach that they design. Do you understand my? Yes, I understand the concern without yeah, question. I, and I, that's I, not what is occurring, right? right. <laughs> I think we can make the resolution clear that it is a faculty, you know, it's a normal existing course that this company will be reimbursing people to take. Oh, oh wait, what, I, as I read the resolution, it's really, most of the money is for building upgrades, right? And electrical charging stations. It's, am I misreading this? No, this money grant? goes to students to take the course. Tuition reimbursement. Okay. There, there is both. There is both. There, there are um, investments to increase the energy efficiency of our buildings. Um, and as Trustee Tillman said, there are um, uh, potential uh, charging stations for electric vehicles that could be installed as a result of this grant, um, as well as the tuition reimbursements, and as well as the construction of the live energy lab, which would be used for teaching, teaching students and monitoring real-time uh, real energy consumption in CCC buildings. And, and what's, what's the, re how much are they re reimbursing for tuition? What, what percentage of the uh, grant? This is, this is a proposal now. Um, okay. 
Okay. Correct. <laughs> One point two million. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we can add the word um, existing course. Uh, right now, it just says course, but we can make that change, Chair Messi. Yeah, well, I love the proposal because if anything we can do to be climate friendly, we should <laughs> we should do. So it's, it's a great proposal. Fine. Mm -hmm. Can you just check procedurally? You know what we would need to do uh, with you know adding any language. Yeah, we can add the language. Um, Carl is on here also. We can add the language um, before it's voted on in the full in the um, in the um, board session. So okay. after this, we can add the language in. You have to pull okay. it from the consent agenda and then address it separately at the board meeting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, pending no further questions on the resource development report, we will move on to the agreements, which will proceed as follows. ABC Anthony will report on agreement 4.00. Chief Financial Officer Rodriguez will review agreements 4.01 and 4.02. Provost Potter will review agreement 4.03. And Director Passarelli will review agreement 4.04. .04. So, uh, ABC Anthony, please proceed. Agreement 4.00 requests the board's authority to enter a depends upon requirements agreement uh, with Midwest Moving and Storage to provide moving and relocation services district-wide for the period starting no sooner than May 6, 2021 through June 30, 2023 at a total cost not to exceed $250,000. This agreement shall also include the option to renew for two additional two-year periods. Agreement 4.01, this is an approval request for an agreement with Wells Fargo Merchant Services LLC to provide district-wide credit card processing services for online tuition payments. An RFP was advertised on February 19, 2021, and Wells Fargo was selected by the evaluation committee out of eight respondents for its high qualifications and extensive experience with higher education organizations. The term of the agreement is for five years from July 1, 2021, to June 30, 2026, with options to renew for two additional one-year periods. This is at a total cost not to exceed $1 million for the contract term. 4.02, this is an approval for an amendment with the current agreement with Wells Fargo for the same services described in agreement 4.01. We are requesting an additional $50,000 in authority for a total cost not to exceed $900,000 needed to complete through the end of the current contract term on June 30, 2021. Why do we need, do we need another $50,000? The initial one was a five-year uh, contract. So it was an estimate based on 2016 data. However, we've seen recently that the number of transactions and dollar value of those transactions have increased. As such, we need to increase it to take us to the duration of the end of this fiscal year and also, as you've noticed, we've increased also the current agreement uh, from nine hundred thousand to one million dollars. Mm, okay. Agreement four point zero three is with Highland Software to provide an imaging system that will enable city colleges to enhance the workflow and expand storage capacity for our in-house financial aid verification process. The imaging system will create, collect, and store electronic financial aid documents, which may include electronic signatures within an imaging repository. This solution provides city colleges with the capacity to achieve the goal of bringing the process of financial aid verification back in-house while enhancing turnaround times and service levels to students. The agreement is for a period of three years beginning June 1st, 2021, at a total cost not to exceed one million twenty nine thousand eight hundred and twenty two dollars. Item four point oh four is a recommendation for the engagement of third party claims administration uh, to adjudicate work comp claims, general liability claims, student athlete injury claims, and student accident health claims. 
Uh, the re recommendation is the result of a CCC procurement process and recommends an award to Cannon Cochran Management Services, Inc. for a period of three years commencing July 1 of 2021 with the option for year four and year five at a cost of $60,000 for a total over the three year period of $180,000. There is full and direct MBE and WBE participation at 25% and 7% respectively. Thank you. There are no um, more questions on the agreements. Uh, ABC Anthony, please proceed with the review of Purchase 5.00. Purchase 5.00 requests the board's authority for the monthly job order contractor construction projects to be performed by the listed contractors. Board reports 33312 and 34029 authorize the utilization of JOC as a construction delivery method to perform renovation services, deferred maintenance and repairs. This month's report lists three projects for a total not to exceed amount of $226,303.85. Thank you. General Counsel Gowan, please review item 6.00, the payment of legal invoices. Item 6.0 requests approval of legal fees totaling $244,905.19. Such fees cover litigation, labor and employment, corporate and higher education matters. Uh, pending no further questions, Trustee Williams, that concludes the review of this month's board reports. Okay. Thank you, everyone. May I have a motion to discharge the May 6, 2021 board packet inclusive of the resolutions, personnel items, resource development report, agreements, purchases, and legal invoices included on today's committee agenda as part of the consent agenda to the May 6, 2021 regular board meeting. Um, Trustee Williams. Trustee Williams. Yes. This is Bonnie. Um, you have to mention that there will be a change in the resource development report you can discharge it and note that there's a change to the resource development report. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bonnie. Um, we would add that there is a change to the resource development report. Um, and so this discharge would be for the, for the board packet inclusive of the resolution, personnel items, resource to, and, and, and uh, agreements purchases with a separate, um, um, handling of the resource development report. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Clearly, Motion all of you believe that access to voting is a right. <laughs> what was that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Well, Gremlins in the system. <laughs> all right. Well, um, let me be the first to welcome our new student representative, student trustee. Yes, um, welcome. Board. Um, welcome, and I, I'm, I'm sure Chair Massey is going to give a, a, a bigger welcome during the board meeting, but I, uh, I don't want to steal his thunder. <laughs> so welcome to our new student trustee. Welcome. All right. Thank you all. Um, Thanks. Bye-bye. So, well, since there's no further business to come before this committee today, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.